What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to dive into crankbait colors. All right, listen, colors and crankbaits, they're endless. You go into an academy, you see this big wall of crankbaits and you're sitting there and you're like, okay, or you're like the one behind me and you're like, okay, what do I need? When do I need to throw this one? Or do you have accumulated a ton of crankbaits like I have right here? This is a shad wraps, okay? You have so many different colors to pick from and you go out there on that spring day and you're trying to figure out which one's the right deal, okay? I'm gonna try to go in and dive into this be sure to show you some of the things that help me um, decide what I'm going to use. Not gonna tell you exactly what to throw, but how some of these the, the colors that have helped me or some of the ideas that really helped me choose and pick a color um, that I feel like is gonna work that given day. All right, so right here below me, I have multiple different colors in a DT6. I mean, I can dive into every different crankbait that I have. My shad wraps, my dang Risto wraps, my DT6s, my DT, whole DT series, all this and that. But we're gonna try to keep this a little bit more simple for everybody out there. So realistically, the first thing that I'm going to look at when I go to a body of water and I get on a lake and decide what crankbait I'm going to pick is the time of year, okay? Seasonal patterns are probably number one. Um, and, and, and what is the forage? You know, I mean, this sort of dives into a little bit of the whole match the hatch sort of deal. Sometimes it's a big deal, sometimes it's not. I've seen certain times of year play more, certain times of year you can just throw it out the window. Now, for me, in the springtime, depending on what the water color is, so I'm gonna be a crankbait that really sets up. So let's just sort of scenario real quick here. Water's six inches to a foot of visibility. It's spring, it's February. You know, you're probably gonna go to more of a crawl pattern. Um, so I'm probably gonna pick up like a DT6 and Demon or like a Chartreuse Brown. Uh, you know, those are two colors that I love to throw in the springtime. This one's more of an orange pink. This one's more of a Chartreuse Brown. Both of them resemble craw crayfish. Uh, if I feel like they're really feeding on shad, that's when I'm gonna change it up a little bit. And I might go to you know, like a disco shad color. It has a little bit of chartreuse on the belly, um, a little bit, you know, a little bit of pearlescent top, a little white on the side. One thing that people don't realize is sometimes with the shad change to a, a white hue when the water stains up. So a lot of times I'll actually throw a white colored crankbait like this one right here, a disco shad or a penguin, um, when the water's dirty because that really resembles the shad even better than maybe a chartreuse blue. Now if the water's really, really dirty, that's when I'm gonna pick up like a chartreuse brown, even like in the in the post spawn or something like that where you, I feel like the fish can really see it. But normally you're gonna pick your crankbait according to the forage. So if it's, you know, you're up north and the fish are feeding on, on perch, and there's a lot of perch in the lake, I'm going to have a perch colored crankbait. You know, I might throw in, you know, maybe like a, a natural color like this one. Um, this is gonna be, uh, you know, this is like the Live River Shad color. And this is gonna be a color that resembles multiple different things. It could, it could resemble a perch, it could resemble uh, a shad, it could resemble multiple different kinds of bait fish, a little minnow, um, because it's sort of like a muted tint. So like this is gonna work in a lot of different circumstances. So one thing that I always pay attention to is how the fish are biting in crankbait. This is the biggest thing that really gives me an idea of what I need to change or if I need to change at all. Now obviously if a fish comes up and he bites this crankbait right here and it has both hooks and he's down there in the bottom of his throat, probably a good indication that the fish really like the crankbait color that I'm throwing, okay? So if, if you have this fish come up and hit the back of the crankbait and you hook it from the back hook, there might be something that's not quite right with the color, it might be size, the size of the bait or the action. So that's when I'm gonna start switching things up a little bit. But one thing that people don't realize is, is, is such a big deal is your top color, okay? The top of your crankbait, the back of your crankbait is so important. And why this is, is a lot of times when we're throwing crankbaits, we're throwing a crankbait that is digging into the bottom of like rocks or gravel. And so when you imagine a fish, he sees this crankbait it's, it's constantly digging like this. And all he's seeing is this dark brown back and then the glimpse of the chartreuse on the side. So that makes a big difference when, especially if he's sitting here and you're cranking rocks and you're bumping the rocks, and then all of a sudden you come off a rock and bam, he bites it. A lot of times that fish is really keying in on the top of the bait and then the accent color is actually the side of the bait. So that's something that I've, I've seen really make a huge difference. Now also, there's times that a fish will bite a crankbait uh, and the belly's a really big deal. You know, where you say like an orange or your chartreuse bellies, um, like especially like in the springtime, you know, oranges tend to play a little bit more 
where I've seen like an orange accent play even more. But you really have to pay attention to what, the way the fish is biting, or the way the fish are biting your crankbait, whether you're fishing out deep, whether you're fishing rocks, whatever it is. If it comes to the point where you're fishing grass, and you're cranking through grass, and you're constantly, you know, out of the grass, a lot of times, or, you know, pulling it out of the grass, more than likely the fish are actually seeing the crankbait on a side profile. So that's when it becomes a deal where your color's actually right here. So like for me, that's a big ordeal. You know, I'm trying to constantly think about how the fish is biting the crankbait, what I need to do, what I need to change. Now, if it's the point, again, if it's a point where I feel like the fish are barely getting the crankbait, that's gonna be a pretty good indication that I'm probably gonna need to change color or change profile of something. Now, when you have a muddy water and super muddy water, you only have a couple of different colors you're really gonna be able to play with. So it might be more, if I, for instance, if you're fishing muddy water, you might only have a couple of different colors you're really gonna have an opportunity to play with. So if a fish comes up and bites and nips my crankbait, I might need to change profile. If I'm throwing a chartreuse blue or a chartreuse brown, I'm gonna change my color first, but then say it's, you know, they're not getting it really good. I'm gonna just go to something that's a little bit harder hitting, you know, more like maybe a speed trap that has a little bit more sound than a DT6 like this one right here. So that's sort of a give, like a sort of idea of what I do when I'm picking these crankbaits. Now going into like color as far as, you know, craw colors, I just sort of want to go through this a little bit because I have multiple different craw colors laid out and I'll put up all these up on my, on my hand real quick. You know, you see, you see some natural ones, you see some dark red ones, uh, you see some more that have a little bit more orange. And this is sort of how I look at it, okay? The the dirtier the water, the more fluorescent or more sharp, you know, more brighter the, the colors I want to roll with. Um, but I have seen an exception to this rule because this color right here, it's sort of natural on top, but then, you know, orange on the belly. So I've caught fish on this particular color right here in water that's 10 foot of visibility because I feel like it's more of a natural, but it still has that orange. And there's times when that clear water in the springtime can play a big role. But if I have a really clear water lake, this mule color is more of a natural crawfish color. You're gonna go to the more naturals. You know, this one right here has a little bit of a, of a purple top, but it has a more of that crawfish color um, on the sides, a little bit more muted. And the water's pretty dirty. That's probably gonna be my, my first pick just because it's more orange, more pinkish, more vibrant. So that's sort of just an idea of how I'm picking these colors and sort of go into the shad real quick here as well because you know, shad's a little bit different as well. So I don't have, you know, all the different colors, but here's a few that I, I always will throw. You know, I have, these are probably my four favorite shad colors. You know, and, and this one right here is more of my natural one. This is a live river shad. This is more of my natural one. It has a foil side, has more of that pearlescent belly. And this is like when the water's really clean, or if I feel like the fish are really keyed in on some sort of type of bait, this can, you know, you see the shad dot on the side. Don't get me wrong, the shad dot on the side, does play a huge role but i've seen it to where like you know that they like i've had fish that are eating perch eat this crankbait so good so this is just more of that deal where if i feel like the fish are really wanting something that's a natural like, color um that live river shad is definitely one of my first picks now two of my favorite colors right here these this is a disco shad and this is a penguin now penguin has a black back disco shad has more of a gray pearlescent back but the disco shad also has that chartreuse belly. So there's times that I will throw this in stained water or a little bit more dirty water, and I might throw this one. It's a catch-22. Sometimes I've seen it to where this particular bait works better, um, especially if they're eating the top of the bait or if they're really peeing on the top profile, better in clear water. Even though they have a chartreuse belly, I've seen that matter. And then also there's times that I've seen it to where this one works really good in super dirty water. It's sort of weird because it has a more of a darker back where the fish can really make it out, but it still has the white side. So, and, and I've had it happen vice versa. So I just sort of keep these both on the deck. There's certain times that one or the other will play, but these are my two shad patterns for the stained water and for that dirty water transition that sort of, those two work really well. And then you have Smash. Okay, Smash is a unique color because it's more of that green back it's a cross between a shad, it's a bluegill, it's also a perch. So I have to have this in my box to sort of take care of multiple different things. If I think the fish are really keying in on bluegill, I will throw this, especially when the grass is dying, you have milfoil or hydrilla towards the end of the year or in the beginning of the year when the water's really clean, I'll transition to that. When I still feel like the fish are eating bluegill or perch, that is a crankbait that I'm gonna throw. 
you can have a lot of different crankbait colors. You can have so there's so many different ones out there. But at the end of the day, you can only throw one at a time. And, and you're trying to use each and every day an idea, give you an idea and a little bit of information on what you need to throw. Biggest tip I can tell you, listen to the fish, see how they're eating the profile of that crankbait, switch it up according, and just, you gotta experiment with it. But hopefully these tips of what I do help you guys out next time you're on the water.